Hi guys, this is Sharon. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back to watch. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Sharon, and this is all my novel ideas. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through my setup of my 2024 weeks. First thing, I just want to say if you hear any cheering or booing, I'm sorry. It's hockey night in Canada, and... The Leafs are currently playing the Canucks. The Canucks are winning. <laughs> uh, oh, they just scored another goal. Now it's 4-6. So, <laughs> well, you might be contending with that noise. Otherwise, uh, I also want to preface, yeah, preface this by saying I didn't set this up until I think I started January 11th. I don't move into my weeks until the first week of January anyways, so I had planned to, to set it up in December, but I was feeling really uninspired and didn't have the energy to do it. So that's why this is late. Um, I think that's fine though, it doesn't matter when you start it, just as long as you do start. And I'm quite happy with the setup in the end. <laughs> but yeah, so if you were looking for some inspiration because you haven't been feeling the need to set yours up yet either, then I hope this is it. So this year I went with the blue plaid. I like it better over the last year's plaid. Um, this was 2023's. It was brown with a red and blue check since i started getting the weeks i've always gotten the plaid just because i find it more interesting of a neutral than getting a solid color uh so my 2022 weeks which is my first was the the black and white gingenham so i went with the blue check blue plaid this year and on the cover is I forget what this cover on cover was called. It came out for the 2023 season. I think it's still available on Hobonichi's website if you want it. Um, I like it. It has like constellations. So it's like Ursa Major. I actually don't know that that's Ursa Major. That Big Dipper Little. I think so. <laughs> and then this closure I just made myself out of elastic and one of those Hobonichi boards that comes in your weeks when you order it. Alright, so let's get started. So this year, this is my landing page. I just put a bit of a... Do you know when you get a package and instead of using like... What do I call it? Bubble wrap nowadays, they use like excess card... Uh, like craft paper style wrapping paper that's just that I have it in like my miscellaneous paper box this is the landing page for the beginning I put a panda uh, what are these called seal from the coffees monsters co because I have the panda week board which, guess if you didn't know, my first name is Amanda, and my parents used to call me Amanda Panda when I was a child. So it was kind of just a funny little inside joke to myself. Last year I used this as like a menstruation tracker, but I'm not going to this year. I don't really think I'm going to use this calendar at all. So I decided to cover up the 2023 and 2025 with a what are these called an inspiration inspo board i hadn't made one since like 2017 2018 to go in a bullet journal and i thought it'd just be fun to make one uh, so all of these photos came from unsplash and then i just put it together on canva this sizing was i made a custom size of three Point seven. 
yeah, 3.7 by 7.5 inches. And then when I printed it uh, from PDF form, I printed it at 95% because at 100, it was just exactly the size of the page. So I wanted it to be a bit smaller so I could have an edge. And then this is just like happy planner stickers, some washi stickers I have, and then washi tape. This first spread is being used as my fitness tracker. I've used it like that uh, since 2022. And then I just have a color key and then I usually mark the, the workout by color and then time is what I keep. This is just a fold out I made because I want to get back into running this year and I had found like a like a pre you know the couch to 5k uh, but a pre version of that where it's like you're just trying to actually first get the endurance up to be able to even try to run um, just because I need it for my I would rather start easy than start like hard. That's not what I mean. I can't run very well on my knee, so I was like, I wanna start building the endurance and strength so that when I go to do like couch to 5K, I can, I won't injure myself. That's what I meant by easy versus hard. So for, this is the December monthly that you get of the previous year, so 2023, and I use it as an inks of the year page. So it's kind of my overall color key for the whole planner these are my colors per month so when we get to like weeks you'll see that they're colored in this is my yearly color scheme so these are all Tombow markers 977 uh, is my yearly color it's here for inks this is a zebra click art in golden yellow and a zebra sarasa dry vintage in bordeaux those are my three main colors of the year and then these are just referencing what the fitness colors are again. And then my current ink is Ferris Wheel Press Spadina Rose, which for some reason I thought was limited edition. But then I saw it was on their website the other day when I went looking, which is fine. But what was funnier is I thought I was fully done. And so I had done like a whole journal spread being like, I'm going to miss Spadina Rose because it's so pretty and I'll never be able to use it again. Then I found out it wasn't limited edition. Then I found out my ink sample wasn't even done. So I did a whole exaggerated spread for nothing. <laughs> uh, so that's the color I'm starting with for the year. It, I think it was like the last four months in my 2023 weeks. I also used it. And then we start into my monthlies. So it's just January. I just have trackers down here. There's not a lot of dates in currently. I tend to backfill them from the weeks out. I really don't use my calendar all that much. I prefer to put Cal dates into Google just because I, I don't know, I've been using Google Calendar for a long time and that's just what works for me. And then I backfill this so that when I go to memory spread in my uh, Hone or Techo, I just, it's easier for me to find. Essentially, I won't go looking at my calendar in my Google Calendar for like dates dating back to like 2022. I'd rather that be in paper form. But during the year, I'm not really looking in paper form at my calendar. I know that's odd. <laughs> so you can see it's all been color coordinated now to my inks of the year or into my colors that I made. So December was the last one. And then we're into what would be the 2025 months. So you get January, February, and March of 2025. But how I set them up is to be monthly recaps. So I just kind of black out the top dates because that's the part that I think would 
bother me the most. And once those are blacked out to me, numbers are easy to ignore. So I've set these up so it's basically every four months fit onto a spread. So we have January, February, March, April. And then I have them broken into categories where this is a small victory, listening to, reading, watching, and then favorites. And then I have the mood tracker for the month. Currently, we're, I've been tracking it for 19 days, and that's pretty good. I don't think I lasted more than a month and a half last year. But I feel more um, inclined to try and keep it up this year. So then we have the next four months. And then the next, can I just say I really like my color scheme. It's so much brighter this year. If I compare it to, so if I compare it to last year, you can see that last year's was kind of quite dreary. And I don't know, it was just like, it was more muted overall. Like there's, these colors are, no, I guess not. These three were used last year, as were these two. But this whole palette just seemed too muted to me. And by midway through the year, I was like, I need more energy. So when I conceptualized it back in September, which is kind of what I usually do, I had come up with this was my color key. And it was mainly based off of the previous year where I was like, I need the colors to be more vibrant. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out in here because everything looks so much more vibrant, especially on just these monthly recap pages. It's like, it, like these four look coordinated together. These kind of vaguely look like Easter colors to me or like a really pastel winter then we have like a very bright like summer and then we have like a nice kind of fall into Christmas so pretty happy with my monthly recap pages uh, I only did them for I trialed this page out in my 2023 weeks I thought of it back in like October September so I didn't I forgot to fill it out there for a bit but it was kind of a nice recap when I did put some info in. So I'm hoping I can do the month like that. Then we come to my project section. So on the, just another decorated page. And then on this page, I put my goals of the year. These are the weeks that they give you of 2023. So I think you got like November 28th to December 31st but I don't move into my weeks until January so these are extra papers and this is what I did with them last year and I like so I've broken them into projects oh I need to title this this is project memory keep which is just back planning um my like homes or I guess sorry back planning my techos just kind of journaling so you'll see they're like tapped out and I set this up at the end of 2022 because I was hoping to be done my 2021, 2022, and 2023 by the end of 2023. That didn't happen. I made pretty good progress. I made, I'm about halfway done on 2023 and like 35% for each of these two. But then I realized that's just... Maybe that wasn't enough time. So I've moved my due date now to like April 30th of 2025. Yeah, and this is just keeping track. I actually did a couple spreads the other day, so I'll check those out off later. But this is my first project for the year. My second one is a work in progress WIPs. I'm hoping to have one of them at least like roughly completed by the end of this year. So I'm just keeping a track in quarters here, one, two, three, four, and then word count written for each. I haven't filled out this page yet. I thought I was running out of my ink and then I obviously wasn't. So I was like, oh, just get these pages done and I'll fill it out with a new color. This is for a recipe archive. I wanted to 
take all of like my family recipes and write them down so I had a copy for myself I didn't I the only progress I made towards that last year was writing out this list <laughs> and then I have one more project page I didn't currently have a project that I'm started so it's there for if I start one but you can see this is how I set it up essentially I have a Tomoe River paper from like 2017 I don't like years ago because I had bought it at the time when I was in travelers journals and someone was like the Tomoe River paper is the best for fountain pens and they had made their own inserts from it and I was like oh I should do that because if it's the best for fountain pens um and then I got the paper and then I never made the inserts <laughs> uh, so I cut it to block out the week because I have like a pack of 40. I also covered up here where your like month is, where it would say January. Covered up a project and then just break down. And then these pages are just ready for setup when you want. Sorry, just drinking orange pico and then we get into the year so i wasn't in my planner first week so this is mostly back planned with a bit of journaling so january first week i moved in like around here oh i guess on the friday january second week the current week we're in and then The rest of the pages so I'll just flip through as you can see I I one of the things I found in 2022 is I really hated picking out a color each month so I alleviated that in 2023 and because I pre-picked my color scheme I decided to just fill them in so it's like one less thing I have to do each week to plan and it's very tedious and takes a long time when you're setting it up because you're like waiting for ink to dry some of these lines aren't perfectly straight but I'm happy that it's all set up because it feels more lived in when I do that it's like I know by month it's a different color so it's more helpful to me when I'm flipping through and then I also if it fell into like the month change I also wrote it because Hobonichi doesn't put in like it's April and May and then the way I pick which color it becomes is whichever whichever month has more days in the week it's that color so for example there's only two days here of April but five of May so it's make it's May's color Those are just reminder sticky notes to transfer information from like quarter one of monthly recap, different trackers into my uh, journal for the year, just because I kind of like to keep that stuff. And now we're into my notes landing page. This is like, I don't know if you remember those old, I think they still make them, Kate Spade zip around personal rings planners, but these were like the back of months. And I had, I really liked the drawings. So they're in my like miscellaneous paper box. And this year I decided I should like use up a bunch of them. So I blocked off this page which has I think it's like abbreviations and then I just set this up with some papers stickers 
this is my last of the Traveler's Company stickers from 2021, which is the like books theme uh, one. And then I just wrote notes. So we have first my index page. Books to read. This year I set up my books to read uh, horizontally just because I was like, I wanted the title and name to fit on one line. And I only set my goal to be 25 books to read, I think. This will fit 19 in this direction. Movies to watch, movie log, TV shows to watch, TV show tracker. These are shows that I want to finish this year. And then I was supposed to put in more shows like transfer from 2023. I haven't yet just because I'm not sure if I'm going to continue watching any of those shows. But those are what these two pages were for. Writing log. YouTube videos, weekly memories. So when I when I journal in the this page here, if I run out of space but I have more to say in that week, then I thread it to back here. So It would look like this. So I thread it by putting the monthly color and then writing the week on top of that. Then this is just my like color scheme from last year. So I would put in whichever week number it was out of 52. So for example, this would be week two. And then I keep journaling in the same format I do over here, which is just day, month, and then dash and keep going. So that's what overflow weekly memories is and then I just tab it off here with journal so that I can find it easy things to do things I want to do in 2024 things I'd like to do in the future at some point journaling prompts favorite meals desserts to bake I really want to make a roulade this year it's kind of been on my to-do list for a number of years so hopefully it happens blank space wish list to buy gift ideas and then this is my gifts given log and my gifts received log and i've broken it down into person birthday christmas just so it was easier to follow my last year's is more free form and i ran out of space on some people so i thought this would be a bit easier favorite things watch this week this is specifically about YouTube videos. It can be other things too, but you have a TV show tracker to kind of track like what you watch, but there's nothing really tracking when I've watched YouTube videos. So when I watch something that was really good to me, I like to just note it down so I can find it again if I ever have to. Because let's be honest, you like, you'll end up liking YouTube videos and then you have like a thousand liked videos and which one are you looking for? It follows the same format as my weekly memories. It'll look like this, where I use the monthly color, I write out the week, the week number, and then I would put in the title of the video and the channel and then just write my thoughts about it. The last one that went in here was like H-Bomber Guys <laughs> plagiarism video, uh, which was very good and really interesting. And the person who was plagiarizing is horrible. So, but if you haven't watched it yet, I think it has like 14 million views. So you've probably seen it. But if you haven't, it's like four hours, but I highly recommend it. This is my project pan for the year. I finished like eight, pro eight products last year. I was really pleased. And then this is project stationary. Uh, I got a good start. A lot of these were from last year, but I didn't really finish anything last year but that's okay I finished two already this year and then this sheet is just like stationary that I finished I just kind of 
like putting it in because if you have like it's like this is last year's these are the things I finished last year it's it's to prevent FOMO where it's like I noted that this was completed this year and then I can't miss it because I can look back here in the future years and be like oh this is when I finished that I've already finished four ink samples this year and I finished one glue stick so that's a big positive lots of blank pages to grow into okay and then we have my recommended list so I was writing the person and then what they recommended I was originally going to put like a rate to like keep track of if whoever recommends me stuff if the recommendations are worth listening to in the future <laughs> but I didn't uh this is artists to check out and then albums to listen to just because I used to listen to a lot of different music but I haven't in a couple years so I'm like let's let's check out some of these music albums that I've heard or things people have said call log I just set it up monthly color day and then I just write Monthly to do, this has tabbed out here with the to do so I can flip through. Instead of writing them in my calendar because I don't like how tiny the margin is, and I also or have already said I don't flip to my calendar, <laughs> this is where the big to do's have to be done. Adulting log, and then reoccurring tasks and chores all the way up to week 52. This is my health section, um, ideal morning, ideal evening, if I actually completed my ideal routine. Yearly mood tracker, I'm gonna condense all of the four month sections from monthly overview to here. Menstruation tracker, leaving the house tracker. I got this idea from someone back in like October, November, I can't remember the channel. And I was just like, that's a good thing because I should leave the house more. <laughs> so I liked that idea and I kept it for this year. Daily stretching tracker. I used to stretch twice a day all the time and I haven't for a while now, so I'm keeping track of it. This is strength goals and then strength trackers. I also got this from someone else. Mm, I'll try to link it down below. I linked it in a previous video, so I'll have to go see which description box has it but I know I remember and essentially it's like exercise current reps goal for year end and then she had set it up with all 12 months and then a chart I actually drew my charts wrong the months should have gone on the line if you're gonna do a dot graph <laughs> I mean you can still do a dot graph like this is just more annoying so I might end up doing a bar graph We'll see. We'll see how I feel when I go to fill them out the first time. Uh, and then I have a little notes section. And then because for me, I really enjoy checking off. When you've completed something like a challenge, I made this just a little printable. So I can be like, oh, you got to your goal of 60 or 20. Just like slowly cross them out as I get ahead. That's just there. This is a blank page. And then I've set up I set up the 365 as a daily step trafficker. My goal is to hit 10,000 steps every day. Minimum would be 5,000 steps. So what I did is I went through through and I counted out the months and I put a demarking line and then to mark like January I took my color and I went halfway through all the days so then you can fill in when you got halfway or full and I did that for the whole year and then this is more of the Tomoe River paper I glued on and I just put in some statistics for walking that I want to know which would be total days walked uh, number of days where I hit actually 10,000 steps 
and then average steps per day. And then I'm tracking here if average steps goes up over the year, which I would hope that it does because as I walk more, I would hope that it just kind of becomes routine to at least go for a short walk. So that's my daily tab. This is just something I print. I think I've had this since my like happy planner days. So like 2018, I don't know. It's just one of those like lists that I got from Pinterest. So it had been sitting in the back of my weeks. So I was like, let's just tape it into this one. Cause I'm, I really look at it and I don't need it for next year. <laughs> and then this is just a square count. So I know if I have to set up a page in my notes that it's 23 squares across 49 down. These are just extra tabs, and then these are the color dots I'm using this year. It's like the brown and green. And then I tape the strings at the back. So I counted through my notes pages, and I had 35 blank ones. And when I compare that to last year, at the end of the year, I still had, I think, 18 blank pages. So even though I had set up about half the number, because there's what, 70, there's 73 pages in the regular Hobonichi weeks. I'm, I basically have already filled in half of those, but I think I'm pretty confident that I have enough space to grow into for the whole year because I have the 18 pages I had left in last year's Hobonichi. Yeah, so that's my Hopanichi week setup for 2024. I hope you enjoyed uh, walking through it with me. It's been a, a bit since I posted a video, so thank you if you're still here. Uh, I guess this is it. So I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully we'll see you again. If not, have a great one. Talk to you later. Bye.